Firstly, I would like to introduce me and, and my job in a few words. I'm not an expert in uh, statistics, or biostatistics, or bioinformatics, that's what I do, but I am a uh, biologist, a clinician, and uh, I uh, treat and manage patients daily. On the other hand, I'm also uh, at the university. I will start the university and uh, I uh, manage a group of uh, research, uh, translational research, uh, essentially on the translation to, to bedside, the use of uh, biomarker. Uh, and uh, predictive uh, model. Uh, this, uh, this group um, is involved also in an uh, international, uh, international uh, consortium uh, in order to, to collect uh, bioresources and, uh, and data and participate to, to big uh, studies at the international level in order to discover a new uh, biomarker in the field of uh, uh, Biological uh, cancer, but uh, we, but also we we validate uh, this uh, knowledge uh, in a cohort of uh, patient and translate uh, this information to a patient in order to develop a new tool or new strategies based on this uh, knowledge. Uh, I met uh, Benadjo uh, 10 years ago and we shared this uh, first publication on uh, prostate cancer and genetic variability and uh, now uh, we will we use the daily bedside lab in the group of uh, research for uh, data mining and in order to, to stratify and explore your, your new uh, data. Uh, today, I would like to, to speak and focus my, my talk on an example based on the prostate cancer in order to show you how we have uh, tried to improve uh, prostate cancer early detection uh, from uh, genetics and uh, usual marker used in, uh, in clinical. Uh, prostate cancer is uh, one of the most cancer world in the, in the world. Uh, specifically in uh, Europe and uh, North America, and the lifetime risk to develop a prostate cancer is about uh, 15 percent, and to, to die from a prostate cancer about uh, 1.5 percent. We, uh, since uh, 1980, a biomarker, prostate specific antigen, PSA, have been used and introduced in clinical practice for the early detection of a prostate cancer. And if you look at that, you can see that the usual cutoff suggested for a prostate specific antigen is of 4 nanograms per milliliter, uh, with a sensitivity about 7. 5%, specificity to 55%, but the positive predictive value for this test is only about 20%. According to the Bayesian theorem, you can see that the probability to have a cancer is a test is a positive, let's say 4 nanograms per minute, it's equal to the probability that the test 
the positive if you have a cancer, the sensitivity. But also uh, the prevalence of the disease, where the, the test is applied. Uh, if you look for the general population in France, for example, the prevalence is about 50%. And also, over the probability to have a positive test, uh, which involves a false positive or true positive test. But at this time, there are controversies and uh, difference between, between the point of view of the regulatory or medical guidelines uh, concerning the use of the prostate specific antigen uh, for uh, prostate cancer screening. Why? Because uh, you can see here the predictive positive value of the data is relatively low and uh, induce uh, irrelevant invasive uh, invasive uh, procedures such as the uh, prostatic uh, biopsy. If you, you look in French uh, population, the distribution of the PC range, it is at about 20% of the population of men after 50 years old have uh, a, a positive test in the population, but uh, Predictive values, the probability to, to find a uh, cancer is only about uh, 10 to uh, 50 percent. And if you use the guideline and made a prosthetic biopsy according to this test, you can see that you made irrelevant prostate biopsy for uh, at least 80 percent of uh, this men. So <coughs> the idea was to, to increase to improve the, the test based on the personalized uh, data according to the prevalence of the disease. If you can enhance the prevalence of the, the disease, the population where you apply the test, the probably you in, you increase the positive predictive value. For present cancer, the major risk factor are age, so, but also a genetic. And it is a familiar history of the cancer and of specifically of that cancer. Ethnicity, all of this genetic risk can be also stratified using a susceptibility marker and then a single declarative polymorphism. The second part is to improve the value of the prosthetic specific antigen. Prosthetic specific antigen is not specific of the cancer, it's specific of the prostate. And this marker in the blood in a healthy population can change with the genetics, like the, the aid, uh, or the anthropometric uh, traits, but also a prostate volume or endocrine profile, uh, such as use of uh, specific medication, exposition to uh, xenogetic or body mass index. So if you use the usual guideline, which has it is anormal to have a prostatic specific antigen over four nanogram per meter, it is probably so stupid that to say that the good size of the shirt is uh, so deep. So we try to, to develop a, a model uh, where the PC was uh, normalized uh, using uh, genetics in order to have a new uh, cutoff uh, and also to introduce a confounding uh, factor and uh, the analysis of the prevalence. The idea is to try to identify at which population risk the patient is present. For that, we have used the result from your contribution to the International Consortium. At this time, genetic susceptibility for post that cancer has been analyzed. Uh, from uh, about uh, 
one and doing the thousand uh, patients for uh, about 10 billion for a single neglected polymorphism and uh, around the world and multigenic population, uh, we know about uh, 100 single neglected polymorphisms which are related to uh, postapin cell risk. But this uh, single neglected polymorphisms are just change between the base and the sequence of the gene for regulating the sequence. And uh, they can change the risk of the disease, or they can change also uh, uh, biological uh, threat or anthropometric threat. For that, we, we have uh, selected uh, the most uh, 50 single neglected polymorphism uh, top of one case in the uh, study. And uh, also, we have uh, screened the healthy uh, population, the single nucleotide the polymorphic, which are related to the expression of the test and the blood level of the prostate specific antigen. And you can see on the left that uh, about five single nucleotides with uh, different combinations of the, the genotype. And in the healthy population, the blood level of the PSA is related to say, the genetic variation without any, any distance. So we have also used a, a large cohort, 1,000 patients with a positive prostate biopsy with prostate cancer, and a population with no prostate cancer according to the result of a prostatic biopsy. They have been stratified using the prostate specific antigen level in the cage. And you can see here that the prostate specific antigen is not a very good marker to stratify the result of the bias. So we have introduced this data, clinical data, such as age, age, the familiar history of prostate cancer, familiar history of breast cancer, and uh, the most relevant single nucleotide polymorphins in this model related to prostate cancer in the statute in this slide. And we have weighting according to the information of the best candidate for the model. On the other hand, we have made the same for the prostate specific antigen, but also only on the LC. Patient of control in order to, to look to, to the information of the blood level of the prostatic specific antigen and to provide a model which could be normalized uh, the prostatic specific antigen according to genetic, prostate volume, body mass index, and age. After that, we have obtained uh, this model where we have a uh, a genetic score for a prostate specific for a prostate cancer susceptibility and a normalized PSA level, PSA score uh, with uh, prostate specific blood level, prostatic volume, and the result of uh, the single nuclear nucleotides which uh, Run the regulation of prostate specific blood level. Using that, the model gives uh, this type of figure, and uh, you can see that uh, the genetic score and the normalized prostate specific score have good information for prospect cancer status. And if you compare the, the predicted frequency of the test, based on here on the, the work curve, uh, you have uh, in, uh, in blue PSA, and you can see that individually the genetic score of a normalized PSA increases the accuracy of the test. And if you jump in the Markov model, uh, these two. Uh, these two score, uh, the, the work uh, curve, and the English work is about uh, 
row point seven. It also possible to get to, to show the target interpretation, and you can see that the distribution of the probabilities, the stereo probabilities, uh, have, uh, are presented uh, from about 50 50 clear probability. It is possible to stratify with a single model your population. If you compare the, the performance of the different markers, age, PSA, genetic score, normalized PSA, and the joint uh, model, uh, you can see that uh, it's possible to increase and to improve the predictive uh, model for uh, post-Parkinson diagnosis in order to reduce uh, the number of uh, biopsy uh, if you have a base set over four. In the conclusion, I'd well, like to, to say that uh, I'm not uh, Statistician, and, but I'm a user of Bazen Lab because it's a very intuitive and powerful tool. Uh, it's easy to, to use and to explore the data. And for, for the clinician, it's uh, also uh, a, good, uh, a good tool. And uh, we have uh, developed uh, new model in order to, to personalize the cut-up for new, uh, new biomarker according to genetic or environmental uh, factor, and also to, to define a new uh, risk profile uh, in order to manage uh, prevention for risk, but also uh, we, we use uh, that in order to, to predict the aggressiveness and, uh, and suggest a new strategies for the management of neurologic uh, disease. Thank you very much. Thank you.